I hope this is our last video for kinematics, unless you ask me more videos on certain problems, um, this could be our last question. So uh, it is kinematics and it's going to be on, um, you're going to see regular based questions in this video and um, you will see the basic rocket problem in this question, uh, in this video. So let's start with some problems that we should solve. We're limited to 30 minutes, so let's go do some problems. Here's one interesting question. It's more like math question than physics question, but I still wanted to do this with you. Um, an object was let go from a height of um, H above the ground. If it covers 420 meters over the last uh, observed three seconds, from what distance did the object was dropped? If you want to take the challenge, pause the video, try to solve it yourself, and then um, and then watch my videos if you did not um, solve it, or maybe you solved it and you want to see the way I will explain it. So always try to pause before you, uh, because you already have enough information to solve any question in this video, uh, but I will solve it for you because I want you to see the practice. And um, if you do stuck on any of the questions, you can always refer to this video. So pause it, solve this question, and then come back to my explanation. So I hope you paused it took your time to solve so let's look at this question together then over the last three seconds so i'm gonna draw last three seconds over the last three seconds an object traveled the distance so the distance here is given i know it's going to be average velocity times the time and the distance is given 420 meters um so this is um one second two seconds three seconds i do not know what this velocity was some velocity but i know three seconds later velocity is going to be plus 30 meters per second because each second for the free fall i add 10 meters per second each second so in one second i add 10 in two seconds i add two in then uh, 20 and then three seconds i add 30. so if I have average velocity, I can say it's initial velocity, which is V in my case, plus the final velocity V plus 30 divided by 2. So I have initial velocity and I have final velocity divided by 2 times the time and the time is 3 seconds and that is equal to 420. Um, so I'm going to simplify my fraction on the top first. So I have 2v plus 30 divided by 2 times 3 and equals to 420. And I'm going to rewrite it this way. Um, something times 3 is equal to 420. That means that this something, uh, which is 2 v over um, 2 to v plus 30 over 2 must be equal to 14 because if i divide both sides by 3 if i divide both sides by 3 that will give me 14 140 yes 140 and then i'm going to look at it this way something divided by 2 is equal to 140. That means that this something is equal to 280. So 2v plus 30 is equal to 280. Um, 2v is equal to 250 and v is equal to 125. So I know V is equal to 125 and uh, V plus 30 is 155. Now, if the velocity is 155, that means it has been falling down for 15.5 seconds because in one second, in 10, in five seconds, it's 50, in uh, 10 seconds, it's 100. In 15 seconds, it is 150. In 16 seconds, 160. So in 15.5 seconds, um, the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time, which is 15.5, will give you um, 155 meters per second. 
So I want to know, the question is, um, if an object was let go from some height, so I'm looking for this height. Initial velocity was 0 meters per second. Final velocity is 155 meters per second, and I'm looking for the distance. So the distance is equal to average velocity times the time. The distance is equal to 0 plus 155 divide by 2 times the time 15.5 so now if I calculate this distance I get the answer of 1201.25 meters here's another question we're gonna look at a ball was thrown upward under an angle with a horizontal so if it's an angle with the horizontal, so it's probably in like this direction, and lands 120 meters away in six seconds. So we have uh, projectile motion. It's uh, motion in the two direction, the x and y. So if they say it lands 120 meters away, so I know the distance is 120 meters, and it takes six seconds. So I know horizontal component of the velocity, so this is initial velocity, and it's like a vector, if you remember the lesson on the vectors, and it will have horizontal, this green one, and the vertical component of the motion, so I'm going to make it in blue. So this one is vertical component of the motion. So horizontal component of the motion, the uh, green one, the velocity x, I'm going to call it horizontal component, the velocity sub zero is initial velocity, and um, blue one is going to be our um, the blue one is going to be our um, vertical velocity. So the x is the distance, which is 120, and time is six seconds. So it travels 20 meters each second. So this is horizontal component of the initial velocity. The initial velocity is in red. And then vertical component of the velocity, I'm going to make some uh, calculations here. So if it lands in 6 seconds, that means it took 3 seconds to get to the top and then 3 seconds to fall down. If it takes 3 seconds to get to the top, initial velocity must be 30 meters per second because it loses 10 meters per second each second. So um, if you go back to our previous lessons where we did word problems, I explained how to calculate this 30 meters per second. So from here I can see that initial vertical velocity is 30 meters per second. And then they ask you how far um, into, how high into the air it went. So if I need to calculate this distance, this height, again it's average velocity vertical times the time vertical average velocity it starts with 30 meters per second so initial vertical velocity is 30 meters per second and the final vertical velocity is zero so the average is 15 and it takes three seconds to get to the top so the height that it went to is 45 meters so my answers are how high did it go it went 45 meters high and what was the horizontal component of the velocity? That was 20 meters per second. So horizontal component of the velocity and the height it went to. Here's another question. So um, again, it is thrown under an angle with the horizontal. It will move in a projectile motion, free fall. It will land um, three seconds later, 90 meters away. So it is three seconds later and 90 meters away. So I know the horizontal component of the velocity vx is 30 meters per second. So it covers 30 meters each second, the distance over the time, 90 divided by 3. And um, to find out how high it went, I know the total distance uh, traveled 3 meters uh, before it falls on the ground. That means halfway through it was 1.5 seconds. And the other half is 1.5 seconds to travel for three seconds before it hits the ground. So if it was 1.5 seconds, that's initial velocity is 15 meters per second. 
initial velocity is 15 meters per second. So if I need to calculate this distance, how high up it went, so the height is equal to average velocity times the time. Initial velocity is 15, 0 is final divided by 2 times 1.5 seconds. 15 times 15 is 225, but I don't have 15, I have 1.5. So I have numerator 15, and then um, 1.5 is not in the denominator, it's also in the numerator, I just don't see that one underneath. So 15 times 15 is 225. Divide by 2, but I don't have 215, 15, I have 1.5, so I have to put um, a dot after 22. So that gives me 11.25 meters. Um, height. So the height it reaches is 11.25 meters and um, the horizontal component of the velocity is 30 meters per second. This is an interesting question. Uh, students usually call it the troglodyte question because it's about the troglodytes and troglodytes like, um, I don't know, like the aborigines, the years and years before we had the tools and languages to speak, maybe they did have language. But a colony of troglodytes has been in a lengthy feud with a neighboring, on a, uh, with the neighbors on an adjacent cliff. Colony A finally develops an important military uh, breakthrough. It rolls a bomb off its cliff at um, known rate of speed, and thus uh, gains pinpoint accuracy in its attacks. If the cliffs are separated by 30 meters, so the, dif the distance between the cliffs is 30 meters, and the bomb hits the opposite side with a vertical velocity of 40 meters per second, so it hits the other side with a vertical velocity of 40 meters per second, how far will it strike down the cliff? So how far will it strike? I need this distance. How far will it strike down the cliff? And what was the initial velocity of the bomb? So I need to know the initial velocity of the bomb. So at first, I'm going to look this way. Vertical velocity is 40 meters per second. That means it has been fallen down for four seconds because vertically it accelerates at 10 meters per second each second. So I know that... Um, if I'm going to use some of the formulas. So my final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the acceleration times the time. Initial vertical velocity, it wasn't falling down right away. They kicked it with some horizontal velocity, right? Or striked it with some horizontal velocity, but not the vertical velocity. So the vertical velocity initial was zero. The final is 40, initial is 0, acceleration is 10, so the time is 4 seconds. So it travels across in 4 seconds. So if it travels across in 4 seconds, then I know uh, vertical horizontal velocity, I'm going to call it x. Horizontal velocity is the distance it travels, which is 30 meters, over the time it takes to cross. So that will give me... Um, 7.5 meters per second so figure out horizontal velocity and how far below the cliff will it hit so I'm calculating the height how far below so if I need to calculate that height initial vertical velocity is zero so average velocity rate is going to be average with the velocity times the time and time is to get across four seconds so initial uh, vertical velocity is zero and final vertical velocity is 40 so that gives me 80 meters. Here's one more troglodyte question. A colony of troglodytes has been in a lengthy feud with um, its neighbors on the adjacent cliff. Colony A finally develops an important military breakthrough. It rolls a bomb off the cliff with, an un with known rates of speed, thus gaining uh, point pinpoint accuracy at its attacks. If the cliffs are separated by the 25 meters and the bomb hits the opposite side at 10 meters per second, how far below does it hit and what's the initial velocity? So at first I know that it's going to hit the other side at 10 meters per second. It takes one second to reach vertical velocity of 10 meters per second because it's been um, hit 
horizontally, but it has zero vertical velocity when it starts moving. So I know the time it's going to hit um, the other side, it's, the time it's going to take is one second because it reaches uh, vertical velocity of 10 meters per second. Then horizontal velocity, so I'm going to call this one horizontal velocity, is equal to the distance it traveled horizontal at 25 meters over the time it traveled, which is one second. So horizontal velocity is 25 meters per second. And then how far below will it uh, hit the other side? So I need this height. And the height is the vertical height. So I need average velocity on y times the time it takes to hit. Average velocity on y. So initial vertical velocity is 0. And the final vertical velocity is 10 over 2. And time to get across is 1 second. So it will hit 5 meters below um, the top of the cliff. Here's another question that I want to look with you at. Um, a family dog with um, runs, so it, it is, I'm gonna skip the reading of the uh, whole question. So it is, um, he runs at the velocity of 6.7 meters per second. So the velocity is 6.7 meters per second. And the dog is 1.2 meters above um, the boat when the boat is moving. So he wants to reach this boat. So I need to figure out how long, I need to know his horizontal velocity. I need to know how long it will take him to fall to the bottom of the height that he's gonna be flying. Um, so how long will it take the time? And if I know the time, I can figure out this distance because it's gonna be his velocity, which is 6.7 times the time. But I need to know the time first. And I will not know the time um, unless I, let's write everything that is given so you will understand why, what I'm, what I'm saying. So we will do, the height is given vertical. So horizontal motion is independent of the vertical motion. I don't look at his velocity right now. I don't care about the velocity of the dog. What I do care is about the vertical motion. Vertically, the dog initials velocity is equal to zero meters per second because he is not thrown downward. He was going to jump forward, but he's going to start accelerating downward because acceleration due to gravity. So his initial velocity is zero. He will have acceleration due to gravity because he's going to be free falling until he hits the boat. So that's going to be 10 meters per second squared. And he's going to travel the distance before he hits the boat of 1.2 meters. So I see that I have the distance, which is the height, and acceleration. I'm going to use the DAP formula to find my final velocity. So the final velocity square root of 2, acceleration, the distance, and plus initial velocity squared. So the final velocity is equal to um, 20, and the height is 1.2. So that gives me the square root of 24 meters per second. And that is 4.9 meters per second so the time it's going to take to fall for the dog is the change of the velocity over the acceleration vertical i'm looking at the vertical motion so vertically the velocity went to 4.9 initial was zero and the acceleration was 10. so it took 0.49 seconds to fall and on the boat so if I need to figure out the distance now, so I want to know what this distance is, I'm going to make it maybe in blue. So this distance. To figure out this distance, I need dog's average velocity times the time. So I'm using this formula, dog's average velocity times the time. So I have 6.7 times, I'm going to round it to 0.5, um, 0.49. So the distance is equal to... 3.35 meters. Here's one more question. A plane is flying horizontally at an altitude of 490 meters and having a velocity of 250 meters per second drops a supply package to a work crew on the ground. If it falls freely without a um, parachute, what is the time required for it to hit the ground and how far down the range will it land? So I need to know 
how far it will land and how long will it fly. So I need this distance and I need uh, the time it will take. So again, I'm going to look at the vertical distance, which is independent of horizontal distance. Horizontal distance. I don't look at this velocity, which is 250 meters per second yet, because when I know the time, then I'm going to look at that velocity to figure out the distance that uh, they ask me how far it will land. So at first, I'm going to look at the vertical velocity. Vertical velocity initial of the package is 0 meters per second. And I can find the final velocity of the package. They give me the distance, which is 490 meters. And I know acceleration. So it's, again, the distance and acceleration type of a question. So I can find the final velocity using the Tau formula. The square root of 2, acceleration is 10, and the distance is 40, 490. So that is the square root of 4900 times 2. I'm going to take the square root of 4900, which is 70 square roots of 2 meters per second. And I'll solve this question if I don't use a calculator. So uh, we'll get used to solving these questions without a calculator. The time it's going to take to fall is the change of the velocity over um, the acceleration, vertical velocity. So the final vertical velocity square root of uh, 70 square root of 2 minus initial vertical velocity that was 0 divided by 10 gives me 7 square root of 2 seconds. Now I know the time. How far will it land? So to find the distance how far, and I'm looking for this distance, the distance how far it will land, I need uh, horizontal velocity times the time so times the time. In horizontal velocity, when the package was let go, it had the velocity of the airplane. So that is 250. It has initial velocity. And times 7 square roots of 2. And my answer is going to be 1750 square roots of 2 meters. So it will land uh, 1750 times square root of 2 meters away from the point where it was dropped. Here's another question. I think maybe it's a little bit easier. A cannon on the top of the cliff facing a river is fired and attacking worship. Uh, this one is the height at which it is, 750 meters below. So this is 720 meters below. And the ship is six, 360 meters away, 360 meters away. And the question is, what is the velocity at which the um, the cannonball fired? The ball, the cannonball. What is the velocity at which the cannonball was fired? So because I ga again, I know the distance and I know acceleration, vertical distance, vertical acceleration. I can find the vertical uh, final velocity using the Duff formula. So the vertical final velocity. I'm not using horizontal motion. Horizontal motion. Um, is has nothing to do with the vertical motion. So if I want to find the time it will fall, it will depend on what height it was. Um, so that is the square root of 2. Acceleration is 10, it's a free fall, and the distance it travels 720 meters. And initial vertical velocity was 0 again squared. So that gives me the final velocity is equal to um, 144 and 2 is 0, so which gives me 120 meters per second. So the vertical velocity is 120 meters per second. That means it was fallen down uh, for 12 seconds. If it was fallen down for 12 seconds, now I can figure out the horizontal velocity. That is the distance to travel horizontally, 360, and divide by the, uh, the time, 12 seconds gives me 30 meters per second. And this horizontal velocity doesn't change when the vertical velocity changes. So the vertical velocity went from 0 meters per second to 120 meters per second in 12 seconds with acceleration of 10 meters per second. And then um, horizontal velocity was 30 meters per second because it traveled 100, uh, 360 meters in 12 seconds. I'm going to solve uh, one of the rocket questions in this uh, problem. If you have more questions in the future, just email me which questions you want me to cover more uh, from our lessons online. But I'm going to stop at this question for now. And if you need more practice, you will just have to let me know which type of questions you want to solve me uh, more. So the rocket moves straight upward uh, from rest. So initial velocity is zero from rest. 
with acceleration of 30 meters per second squared. It runs out of fuel um, after four seconds and continues to coast upward, reaching a maximum height before falling back to Earth. Find the rocket's velocity in the position um, at four seconds. So initial velocity of the rocket was zero meters per second. For um, four seconds, it had the acceleration of it had the acceleration of thirty meters per second. So acceleration was thirty meters per second squared. So in four seconds, it its velocity is initial velocity plus so to find the final velocity. I can use initial velocity plus acceleration times the time formula. So that gives me 120 meters per second. So what's the rocket's velocity? It's 120 meters per second. And the position, what distance did it travel? So if I want to calculate the distance it traveled, that is average velocity. So initial was zero, final is 120, average is 60 times the time for seconds, so that is 240 meters. So now the rocket is uh, 240 meters above the ground. What is the maximum height the rocket reaches? So if I know that the velocity of the rocket right now is 120 meters per second, and it has no more acceleration, but deceleration of 10 meters per second each second, um, I know it's gonna stop in 12 seconds. So in 12 seconds, um, the rocket is going to lose its velocity because each second is going to lose 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So in 12 seconds, it's going to have 0 meters per second. So I can calculate this maximum height additional to the one that I just found, 240. So I'm going to call this height h. So h is equal to, again, average velocity times the time. Initial velocity of the rocket was 120, and then eventually it stopped, so average is 60 and it will take 12 seconds for it to stop. So that is 720 meters. It will go additional 720 meters. So if I want to know, um, sorry for all these writing here. So if I want to know the total distance that the rocket travels from um, the beginning until the end, I'm gonna call it big H. So that h is equal to the sum of these two numbers, which is uh, 960 meters. So that is 960 meters. So uh, when they ask you to what height it went, so at first uh, for this question for a, you would have 120 meters per second and the distance traveled 240 meters. For b part, the maximum height is 900 60 meters and then for the last part find the velocity at the instant right before the rocket crashes on the ground so now i have to find the velocity um, of the rocket when it reaches the ground so i'm going to call this final velocity because i know the total height where the rocket is so my total height here i'm going to erase all this extra information so my total height here is right now 960 meters. So this is 960 meters. Initial velocity is zero meters per second. And there's gonna be acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. So I can find the final velocity using the DAF formula. It's the square root of two acceleration and the distance is 960. And the initial velocity is zero. So it's plus zero squared. So the final velocity when it crashes on the ground is going to be the square root of 19,200, which is, I can take the square root of 100, which is 10, and I have 192. And if I simplify 192, that's the same as 64 times 3. I can take the square root of 64. Remember, I'm not using a calculator for these problems. I'm trying not to. That gives me 8 out times 10 is 80 square roots of 3 meters per second. So when it hits the ground, it will have um, the final answer right here is going to be 80 square roots of 3 meters per second. So I have these answers for every single part that they ask me to. And that's it for um, this question or this video because I have only 15 seconds left. And I will see you in the next video. 
um, maybe it's gonna be kinematics 5 where I'm gonna solve more questions that you ask me to solve for you.